Black Myth Wukong is one of my most anticipated games of 2024, and previews are landing any minute. I've even got leaked information from a preview that hit a little too early. So we're getting to kind of jump ahead here, and I, I feel like I've been watching this game for a really long time, and that's because we kind of have. Their official gameplay trailer debuted in August of 2020, and immediately it got the attention of the gaming world. It is currently sitting on their official YouTube channel with over one million views. Souls fans were obviously drawn to the fast movement and what looked like challenging combat, but any fan of action RPGs or open world action games quickly saw a game that had a lot of heart, soul, and a unique looking protagonist. And then a year later, they dropped another lengthy gameplay trailer, but this time it was in Unreal 5 Engine. And this served as their announcement that they had switched from UE4 to UE5, and at the time, it was easy to see why they made the jump. The lighting and the shadows combined with the fast character movement, the highly responsive snowdrifts, and the overall presentation left many of us desperate to know more. Well, we would have to wait another year, and like clockwork, once again, in the summer of 2022, we got another long gameplay trailer showing off the NVIDIA tech that they were using in a 4K trailer that showed off lush and colorful environments that just seemed too good to be true. And then again, you guessed it, in August of 2023, they dropped another trailer, and this one longer than all the previous trailers, clocking in at 19 minutes. This trailer, like the previous, had no problem showing large sections of gameplay, including larger-than-life boss fights. Just a side note, some other studios and bigger companies should take some notes from these guys. They're always showing tons of gameplay. And then... The moment of truth finally arrived. This year at Summer Game Fest, they dropped their release date trailer. And the presentation seemed to emanate and exude confidence from a dev team that knows they have a hit on their hands. They also opted for a more traditional trailer structure this time with lots of quick cuts, cinematics, and more insane looking boss fights. And just yesterday, Pure Xbox leaked their preview of the game by spending, they spent about two hours in it. And they didn't really leak it, they just published it early by mistake, because I think the embargo times got confused. And I actually got to watch it multiple times times and while I can't show you the video here I can certainly tell you they were impressed they even said that it could be headed for game of the year I'll give you more of what they said in a moment but I see two big challenges potentially getting in the way of the game of the year contention now every weekday here on reforge gaming i tell you what i think about a gaming topic and then we go to a live stream where i want to know what you think so if you want more content like this hit like and subscribe in this video i want to talk about the game's engine choice as a big challenge but i also want to talk about the sudden surge of souls games in the recent years especially even this year making it harder for a game like wukong to stand out i even have an example of a game last year that didn't quite get the treatment that i feel it deserved but before i do that what did we learn from the preview that got leaked the black myth wukong preview embargo is literally dropping any moment but thanks to one trigger happy outlet i was able to see eight minutes of new b-roll along with hearing their thoughts and pure xbox had nothing but glowing things to say which honestly holds more weight because Xbox-based outlets may be inclined to be more critical of the game given its unknown arrival on the Xbox platform, likely due to the Series S. Now, not that every pro Xbox outlet would just be immediately biased against Black Myth Wukong, but they said the general vibe of the capture event was so positive, they didn't want to bring it down by asking about the delayed release on Xbox, which I can respect that. That's really not the purpose of a capture event. They're letting you come and play their game and and get access to B-roll so that you can have something ready the minute the embargo of the preview drops. So I think it's fine that they didn't press them on that. I think the gaming press is going to handle that in the coming weeks. I'll have more thoughts about it coming to Xbox later in the video. This was a private two-hour event. They described the game as, quote, phenomenal. They could quickly tell it was a UE5 game, and they said that it's a Souls game, but it's kind of not a Souls game. There was a big bear fight that they talked about. There's footage of this fight, and I thought it looked absolutely incredible. The combination of good and readable attack telegraphs in this big, giant, ferocious and terrifying enemy design. I just thought it was a wonderful combination. They made it so, like, if 
as the player, you're going to feel fear because it's just such a big enemy and such a big fight, but you can also properly engage with the game's mechanics. Now, there is no blocking. There's no blocking or parrying in this. It's perfect time dodges to avoid blows. However, you can use LB to spin your staff and block or deflect projectiles. This is according to this preview, so if there is sort of some sort of blocking or pairing in the game, they, they didn't use it when they were at this preview event. Now, the game uses stances that change the move set of the character. One stance in particular stood out to them. It was called the pillar stance, and it made the staff grow longer and longer, and eventually you could have this big crescendo of a massive ground slam. Combat also has spells and shape-shifting. One spell could freeze the enemy in time, and the shape-shifting allows you to beat certain enemies and take on their form for a limited amount of time and they said that the shape shifting was varied and it really elevated the combat now the game clearly borrows ideas from souls games but they said it felt more like an action rpg for example the game has a more traditional skill tree instead of having abilities that are tied to weapons or armor sometimes in a souls game you got to go find a particular weapon if you want to do something really cool in this game you're just sort of building out your skill tree that's preset and you unlock the stances that you can switch from the higher you level up, and then you can make those individual stances more powerful. They also said that it felt easier than a traditional Souls game, although we are hearing that the preview event did feature two particularly challenging bosses, so we'll have to check more previews for that. Now, if the whole game is like this two-hour sample that they got to play, they said, quote, it could potentially be in the running for Game of the Year. So... Why am I concerned about the UE5 engine after hearing all this positivity about the game? I've even heard that previous events where people play this game, they got a solid 60 FPS on the PS5. So, what's my issue with Unreal 5? The Unreal 5 engine was touted as revolutionary in the early days where tech demos and trailers started hitting the internet, but it was quickly shown itself to be a very tough beast to master. A very consistent theme of Unreal 5 games is that they just don't run that well. They certainly look great, and the trailers draw a ton of attention and praise, but when the games land, every corner seems to have a rough edge. First up, The Lords of the Fallen, a game that I said may have ended up being a sleeper hit just based on how impressive the trailers looked. It featured unique mechanics in a dark, twisted, and macabre medieval setting, and while many worried about comparisons to Elden Ring, I thought this could be 2023's Elden Ring. Even the early previews sounded promising, and the unique take on two different worlds or dimensions felt like it would help the game stand on its own with its distinct take of the Souls format. But... It has a pretty unimpressive 73 to 75 between Open Critic and Metacritic. Its overall score on Steam is 61%, and its score on PlayStation is 74, and Xbox a 60. And much of the criticism centered around performance issues associated with the UE5 engine. Then, Immortals of Avium fell into a similar category, a visually impressive game in the trailers, and it has very similar scores on Open Critic, Metacritic, Steam, PlayStation, and Xbox to Lords of the Fallen. Now, Immortals was criticized for more issues. It wasn't just performance, but performance consistently came up in the critical reviews and the negative user feedback. Then, enter stage right, Hellblade 2. Another title unable to hit 60 FPS on console, which was mostly chalked up to the emphasis on graphical fidelity and lighting. And to be fair, Hellblade 2 is one of the best looking games I have ever played. It is undoubtedly headed toward award nominations for the graphics, the sound design, the vocal performances. But when discussing the game's choice to cap itself at 30 FPS on the Xbox Series X console, John Linneman from Digital Foundry assured me that the UE5 engine made it very hard to hit 60 FPS if you're leveraging all of the engine's features. Many have described the engine as heavy. Now, I spoke with John Linneman privately about his confidence in the Coalition getting 60 FPS out of the next Gears game because we know they're using UE5. He thinks they're the masters of the Unreal Engine and that they will definitely figure it out. So, when I look at Wukong and the team from Game Science, I just really hope they're just as confident that they're just as good with this engine because all the previews up to now... Well, they could just be very polished vertical slices. We saw high praise for the Lords of the Fallen in its previews. It was described as beautiful, an exciting transformation. It was described as a Souls-like surprise. 
Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening with Black Myth Wukong. I'm just pointing out that another UE5 Soul-style game managed to impress everyone with its previews, but when it launched, the whole package failed to deliver on excellence. The silver lining here is, ironically, the developer's refusal to ship the game on Xbox at the same time as the other platforms. And no, this isn't shade. This is actually a comforting thing. Well, why? Well, if you read their own verbiage about the situation, they will announce a release date for Xbox as soon as, quote, it meets our quality standards. If they were just pushing out this game before it was ready, it wouldn't make sense to hold back the Xbox version. They would just ship it as well. That tells me that the game is ready. But sadly, once again, the Xbox Series S is posing a problem for a visually demanding game. And a game like Wukong simply cannot have frame rate or performance issues. It completely ruins the immersion and the combat. Elden Ring had issues with it in its first day, and they eventually got it fixed, but it was very, very hard to play when that was happening. Now, there is something else, I think, that may get in the way. A Black Myth Wukong landing on the Game of the Year podium. The recent increase in Souls-type games. One of the surprise gems of 2023 has to be Lies of P, and now that I've pulled it back out of the backlog, it continues to reinforce my view that the critics and the gaming outlets criminally underrated this game. Just recently, I got past this pesky clown fight, and I found my way up to a location known as the Opera House, and I'm just continually blown away by the art style, the art direction, the enemy design, and just the overall package of greatness in this game. And the gap between the user scores and the critic scores is huge. It landed in an 80 and 82 on Metacritic and OpenCritic, but it has a 92 and a 94 on Steam and PlayStation. That is a huge gap, and scores like a 94, that's really hard to pull off. Now, I did a show about this because in my research, I wanted to know why the scores from the users were so much higher, and all of the reviewers that were taking issue with the game and not giving it the highest of scores, they were saying that it was basically too much like other FromSoft games. That was a consistent theme in virtually every review I read that was a little bit more negative or maybe not that glowing. They're like, well, it was too similar to other FromSoft games. That is an incredibly empty criticism. Entire systems in Elden Ring are practically lifted one-to-one from previous games, and that That's fine. It doesn't matter because the complete package of Elden Ring is fantastic. And the same could be said about Lies of P. So, will Black Myth Wukong suffer the same fate? Not only could it be unfairly compared to all previous FromSoft games, there's also a lot of games in a similar vein just this year. Stellar Blade isn't exactly a Souls game. It's a little bit more like Sekiro with a little bit of dash of the action RPG style. And it currently is my favorite game this year. But you could see comparisons, or you could see sort of it getting drowned out here. There's also Rise of the Ronin, another fantastic game this year that I sunk a ton of time into. Again, not exactly a Souls game, but it's in a similar lane. There was even the Crab game, another Crab's Treasure. That's classified as a Souls-like. Now, my son enjoyed it when I let him run around with a gun. Yes, you can actually go into the settings and do that. It's pretty hilarious, but that's another one. We also have Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, landing very soon in July. And again, none of these games are exactly like Black Myth Wukong, but they could sort of cloud the waters when it comes time to vote in each category. If all these outlets have played a bunch of games like this in the year, it could make it tough for one of them to stand out. And don't forget, there is still one more giant in the room. Elden Ring will stand tall once again in just a matter of days. The long-awaited Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Erd Tree will drop. Elden Ring is practically a gaming phenomenon at this point, and some of the world's biggest streamers recently were taking on the game for the very first time in anticipation of the DLC. So as I said, Black Myth Wukong is facing challenges, even though for now it does seem to be aiming at standing very tall, which to me will make it even more impressive if this game scores well, and even more so if it lands a Game of the Year nomination. If a game is good looking and as great as Lies of P can get snubbed, Black Myth Wukong could get treated in a similar way. But if the previews and the whispers that I'm hearing are any indication, Wukong has a very good chance at bumping somebody out of the running for Game of the Year. 
those are just my thoughts and now it's time to hear your thoughts and you can do that in a comment below or there's a live stream that follows this it'll redirect it'll also hit a card here as well as being in a pinned comment below and if you like this content and you want more like it please remember to like share and subscribe